Hello, welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whisky blog. I'm Andy and this is whisky review number 61. It's also the third of four parts in the little sort of American whisky bourbon mini series we've got going on in the run-up and over the course of the 4th of July. So we've already looked at Buffalo Trace, we've looked at Maker's Mark and today I am looking at a Jack Daniels bottling. It's not the standard Jack Daniels, it is Jack Daniels Master Distiller Series and this is number three, uh, which is Master Distiller, let's get his name right, Lemuel Lee Lem Tolly. It's a mouthful, isn't it? You want to say that after too many of these? So, Jack Daniels is a name that will be known throughout the world, whether you've drunk it or not, you will know and will have heard of Jack Daniels and its distillery in Tennessee. And that's because it's probably one of the most marketed and marketable whiskies on the planet. Owned by Brown Foreman, who also now own Glendronic Distilleries, Ben Reich Distilleries and Glenvasa. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they basically own Jack Daniels. Now, there is not a shop in the UK, in the US, probably in mainland Europe, that sells whiskey that you know won't sell Jack Daniels. They will all sell it. Guarantee it, they will all sell it in some way, shape or form. Supermarkets, corner shops, convenience stores, you know, village shops, you name it, they will have some form of Jack Daniels. Now, Jack Daniels Master Distiller Series is, as it sounds, a series of bottlings dedicated to previous master distillers. This particular one, as we say, is dedicated to Lemuel Lee Lem Tolly, who was the master distiller from 1941 through to 1964. Um, so he was there for a good 34 years, 20, 34 years, 24 years, that was terrible maths, 20, 23 years, I still can't get it right, 23, <laughs> let's start again, 23 years he was Master Distiller, he was also the founder, Jack Daniels, he was his grand nephew, yes, Mr Jack's grand nephew, um, which you know, I'm sure they're a really close family and quite sizeable by the sounds of it. So, the, there's a few others in this bottling, bottling range, I think there's five or six in total, don't, don't quote me on that though. Um, however, number three, which is this one, was on offer in Tesco, so I picked it up for 23 quid uh, for a full bottle, which uh, is actually, was actually cheaper than the standard one in there, so I thought, you know what, why not, give it a go. So... Apart from the difference in the label and the packaging, the Distiller Series bottling is bottled at 43%, so it's 3% higher than your standard Jack Daniels, which is uh, bottled at 40%, so that's a good sign, that is a good start. Now Jack Daniels itself, as I say, very, very famous, very popular, it's very prevalent in pop culture, television, films, things like that. Um, the Distiller itself uses some, I'm not going to say unique processes, but sort of processes that tend to set it apart a little bit from your generic bourbon producers or a lot of uh, producers in Kentucky, for example. Um, one of those, and you'll probably see it if you have drunk it before and you'll see it on the label, it doesn't describe itself as a, as a bourbon, it describes itself as a Tennessee sour mash whiskey. Now, all that means is sour mash is basically where they take spent ferment, uh, fermented mash, so Think of basically, they've, they've had one run, they've put some of it aside, it's spent, it's done, pull that over there. They then reuse that because it still contains some live yeast. Think of it akin to a sourdough. So some, some sourdough starters go through families and generations and generations because it doesn't go off. It's live yeast, it's flour, it's water, etc. Think of it as the same way with sour mash whiskey. You basically use this uh, spent fermented mash you then put it into a kickstart your new batch. And what the difference is actually between using sour mash and a standard straight to mash process is it actually manages to get a bit of control over the bacteria that's in there so it can control bacteria growth. It also, gen generally speaking, creates quite a consistent spirit, which is why Jack Daniels, no matter where you buy it, the standard Jack Daniels, it will always taste the same. No matter where you buy it, France, Spain, Canada, America, Venezuela, Barbados, wherever, it will taste the same because it's that consistent because 
part that sour mash does play a part in that. So that's one thing. I'll go into a bit more on that later. As an aside, colour in the glass. Well, to be honest with you, I don't know if it's if it's natural colour or not. If it was labelled as straight Kentucky bourbon, for example, or just straight bourbon in general, they wouldn't be able to add any colour to it. However, it's not labelled as such. Um, so, literally on the label, it doesn't even say it's a sour mash whiskey in this one. It will be, because that's the standard process that they use. It just describes it as Jack Daniels Master Distiller Series Charcoal Mellowed Tennessee Whiskey Limited Number 3 Edition 43% volume. So, we just don't know. Decent enough legs on the glass. Now let's see what it's like on the nose. Very sweet. There is a little bit of vanilla in there, but not so much as we experienced on the Buffalo Trace, for example. I'm getting boiled sweets, but fruit boiled sweets. So that's strawberry boiled sweet, a bit of sort of like maybe a lime boiled sweet, something like that. And um, there's also sort of like a popcorn kind of note to it as well. There's something quite jammy in there. So I think, um, or jelly if you're from the US. Um, so I think strawberry jam. There is something really quite con fruit conserve kind of thing in there. I've got to say it's a hell of a lot more complex than the standard Jack Daniels. I'll give it that. I mean the pre predominant theme here is just it's very sweet, it really is, it's very sickly sweet. <sighs> cherry. Yeah, a lot of cherry, I think like Mascherano cherries, Luxardo cherries. And thick syrup. Sort of the type of cherries that you find in like a Black Forest Gatto, really dark, rich cherry. It's a good start overall, it is a good start. Straight on the palette. Surprisingly hot, very warm, very warming, spicy, toffee, caramel. You know, I've got this cherry element in there as well, cherry pie. Really sweet cherry pie and vanilla custard. Sort of like maple syrup, sticky sweet. A little bit of that depth in there. I mean, the finish is, is quite long, you know, it is, it is quite long. Um, but all I am getting from that finish, not really any, any heat, but it's... It's sweet, you know, I mean, that, that maple syrup is pretty much nailed on that I mentioned towards the end of the palette, that is what it is. There's a little bit of a burn to it, but, you know, it's nothing out of the ordinary, let's say. I mean, another thing that's quite interesting about Jack Daniels, although it is used by at least one other distillery that I can think of, well, in fact, it's, it's used by quite a few, um, they, I mean, I mentioned on the label, charcoal fil charcoal mellowed. And what they basically do uh, is they take strips of wood. They actually use very high proof Jack Daniels to ignite it, which I think is quite a nice touch. Uh, they let that charcoal burn down. They then use that charcoal to pass the whiskey through before it's put into barrel to basically filter, like take out any well, they say to take out any impurities and things like that, uh, and it's supposed to give it a more mellow, rounded flavour. So, um, I know that George Dickel Distillery do that as well, and that's also in Tennessee, but I believe it isn't too uncommon uh, in with certain bourbon producers as well. So, there's just two two little things about uh, Jack Daniels, or JD, as, uh, as everyone seems to call it. Um, I mentioned in, the, I think it was the first video where I showed you the, the potential lineup that I was looking at, um, 
Well, one of my friends is, um, we'll, we'll go into a bar, no matter, we know what he's going to order. We know what he's going to order. Everyone's probably got one of these mates that spends about 10 minutes at the bar and like, what do you want? And he's like, um, looking at everything on pump, everything on tap, everything in the bottles, everything. Oh my God, right, we could be there for ages. Nine times out of ten, he will go, JD and Coke. I'm like, oh, well, we knew that was coming. Um, it is a very popular drink. It is JD itself, the standard JD, is, in my opinion, plain. However, I can see the attraction to it. It is very accessible, it's very affordable, it is very easy to drink. It is incredibly smooth, incredibly, me incredibly mellow. And some people, that is what they look for in a whiskey. They don't particularly want anything that's going to create any heat in the mouth or anything potentially unpleasant that they might not have experienced before or might not know too much about. And, you know, I mean, as I mentioned before, it's a very consistent product. No matter where you buy it from, it's going to be the same. Touch wood, don't hold me to that. Probably is, though. Um, so, I mean, I think already, in terms of this distiller series, this for Lem, Lem Tolly, classic Lem. Um, I can see already it's head and shoulders above the standard uh, Jack Daniels. Is it still my cup of tea? I wouldn't f actively search it out um, on the shelf. However, I am more prone to going for bourbons and, and things like that. Jack Daniels isn't something I generally have in, have in stock, shall we say. Um, but I can see the attraction, and it's it's a it's a well made whiskey to be fair. You know, it, it really is. Um, the packaging is quite nice as well, with the sort of like copper finish. Uh, and I say there are a few versions of this. I, th I believe six could be more. And there are people out there who collect Jack Daniels and Jack Daniels merchandise. Cause it, it is that marketable? It is that popular? There are people that actually pay a lot of money for like one litre bottles of like Jack Daniels honey and or like some wall plaque that will cost 200 quid because it's got Jack Daniels, just crazy stuff in terms of like the pricing but it's a very collectible brand and that is that is the key with Jack, Jack, Jack Daniels, it is a brand, it is recognisable, it's got a very good reputation and people like that. So I mean in terms of pricing I did pick it up I think I said enough for about 20 odd quid um, I think that was actually reduced down temporarily by £10, so it should have been about 32 33 as standard RRP. You might be able to get it cheaper, to be fair. I don't know. Um, I have seen this one on, online on Master of Malt, I think, and it was around 30 odd quid. So, just before we wrap up, just one more, uh, one more attack. Yeah, the cherries are really all over that nose. I love cherries. Cherries, maple, charred oak, or just char in general. Heavy sweetness. I'd, I'd describe it as quite clunky in its, in its sweetness. It feels very thick. It feels very kind of it feels gooey if you know what I mean. Just the just the flavours, the very rich, quite overbearing flavours, very sickly. Um, and again on the finish, just getting that maple syrup, not really much in terms of temperature, warmth, etc. Um, so in terms of the Jack Daniels Master Distiller series, and this particular bottle being number three, dedicated to Lem. Uh, I'm going to give this whiskey uh, 79 out of 100. Um, I think, as I say, it's better, in my opinion, than the standard, standard Jack Daniels. However, I don't feel that it has enough variety to it. Um, very, very pretty packaging. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, just, just not one for me, I'm afraid. Thanks for watching. See you soon.